Hi guys, the Metal Maniac back again, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a review of the live album, King Diamond in Concert Live, uh, 1987. Um, I don't know how many live albums, uh, are, there are in the King Diamond discography. Um, this is really the only one I've ever come across, so maybe this is the only one, but I'm not sure. Um, anyway, so this live album was recorded during the Abigail tour, of course, in 1987. Um, but for whatever reason, the recordings were forgot about for a long, long time. Uh, until King Diamond one day sort of like went, was going through his basement, and uh, he found a box with unmarked tapes. And then he played the tapes, and he and he found out that they were the concert recordings from the from the Abigail tour. So yeah, this album was technically recorded during that tour in 1987, but the live album wasn't released until the early 90s. Um. Anyway, so before I'm gonna get into the uh, songs, I'm gonna name off the band members really quick. <clears throat> Um, of course, King Diamond on vocals, Timmy Hansen on bass, Mickey D on drums, Andy LaRoque on guitar, and uh, Michael Moon on guitar. Now, the only band member that is different on this lineup compared to the lineup on the Abigail album is uh, Michael Moon. Uh, if I remember correctly, the guitarist in the lineup uh, when they recorded the Abigail album was, I believe his name was, uh, Michael Denner, I think. But, uh, yeah, apparently he left before the tour started, so they had to get someone else in his place. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, the live album starts off, of course, with the intro funeral, which, um, I don't know for sure, but it, the, at least this particular track sounds like it's pre-recorded. Like it, it, it sounds like they actually just played the audio recording from the Abigail album through the speakers. Um, because, I don't know, it, this track is the only one that doesn't sound live. It, this is the only one that actually sounds like it's from the actual album, um, from the studio album. So, yeah, I think this track is not actually quote-unquote a live track, um, but the rest are. Anyway, so the actual first track is, of course, Arrival. Um, yeah, this is a really, really good song, <clears throat> both studio and live, although I kind of prefer the studio version considering that this live version, for whatever reason, um, for whatever reason, the riffing is slightly different in the opening, you know, the opening riff to this song. Uh, the main lead riff is slightly different, like, it's, it's a little bit more frantic and a little bit more, um, wild. Not over the top or anything, but it is definitely noticeable. But I think that's just because Michael Moon is, you know, not, of course, the other guy, so I think if... It kind of sounds like it's his guitar riff that's the lead on this live version of that song in the opening riff, but it, I don't know. Maybe maybe it was intentional. Maybe it was just because, you know, a different guitarist, so, like, different style. I don't know. But the, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. It, it, it's a great live version. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just saying that I noticed that the opening main riff was slightly different. Um, but, uh, yeah, great live song. Um, the next song is called Come to the Sabbath, which is a live song from, I believe, the Don't Break the Oath album during the, uh, Merciful Fate days. Um, yeah, I've never been a fan of this song. In fact, most of the songs on Don't Break the Oath I don't actually like. Um, mainly just because, just, the, the style compared to the, uh, King Diamond's solo career is so, is so different, especially with the album Abigail going forward, that, I don't know, I just don't like the style, the uh, particular style from um, Merciful Fate 
Um, for the most part, there are a few songs here and there that I do enjoy, but Come to, Come to the Sabbath is not one of those songs I enjoy. Um, but yeah. So, the next song is uh, The Family Ghost. This is a great live version. Um... Uh, King Diamond, um, in this, in this song, um, I've noticed that, like, his highs are almost 100% accurate to the studio recording, um, which is interesting because a lot of the live versions of the songs on here, uh, his highs are, are, uh, um, a, I guess a little bit more, like, a higher octave, just maybe a few octaves higher than on the actual studio album of Abigail. Um, yeah, but, but this song in particular, this live version of this song, whose vocals are almost 100% the exact same, like, very, very accurate to the studio version. Um, but, uh, yeah, the Sam Family Ghost, of course, great song, great live version. Um, the next one is a live version of the song, The Seventh Day of July, 1777, another great version live. Um, yeah. Oh, here we go, here's an interesting one. Uh, the next live song is The Portrait, of course, from Fatal Portrait. Um, yeah, this is one of my favorite songs from uh, Fatal Portrait, of course. Um, yeah, a really great live version. I, I don't think I've ever heard this particular or and pretty much any uh, Fatal Portrait song live before. Um, so it's it very interesting to hear this uh, live, and yeah, it's actually really good. Um, the next track isn't really a song, it's pretty much just an extended guitar solo by Andy LaRocque. Um, pretty, pretty interesting sort of like little like so solo work. Um, I mean, it's it's good, but it's definitely not as great as like a, a, a an extended solo, like um, something like uh, um, D Dave Murray's extended solo on the uh, Maiden Japan live album. But it's still it's still decent. Um, next up is the song "The Possession," really great song. Like all these songs sound really good, both live and studio. Um, but uh, yeah, then Abigail. Here we go. This, um, is, of course, probably the fan favorite, um, uh, in terms of the Abigail album, it's probably the fan favorite, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's awesome, uh, great live version, pretty much with every single song on here, um, then a drum solo, and extended drum solos after that, then we go back to the actual songs, uh, The Candle, Arguably my favorite song on Fatal Portrait. Um, it's either that or Dressed in White. But yeah, The Candle, another great song and also great live as well. Um, the last song is called No Presents for Christmas. Now, when I looked at the track listing on here the first time I got this, I was like, I don't recognize this song. Um, and I was looking on the... Uh, back track listing of Fatal Portrait, because I, I, I thought maybe it was from there, maybe it was a bonus track, but no. Um, so I was, I was look, wondering, where is this song from? I've never heard heard the song before, but I have heard the title of it. I was like, where is this from? And I was doing some research, and apparently, uh, it was a single. It was a single, I believe... It was after Fatal Portrait. I I think it was um, released as a single along with uh, the song "The Family Ghost." Um, I was like, oh, I don't know. I I'd never heard of this song, so um, it was interesting. But honestly, ugh, eh, it's it's not that good. It's sort of cheesy in all the wrong ways, and uh, yeah, it's it's just one I don't enjoy. And that, um, ends the live album. Alright, so, before I get into my final thoughts, um, I'm gonna show off the artwork really quickly. So, the artwork is meh lacking. It, it, it's just basically a picture of King Diamond, but, like, everything is just, like, red and black. Um, uh, okay, it's a picture, uh, but, I, I don't know. I think it looks, I think it looks fine. Um, oh, hold on. 
There we go. Um, of course, you get the King Diamond logo up top. Um, and then, of course, in concert, 1987 Abigail. I just... I, this is a very weird title. Like, it... it, it the title's In Concert 1987 Abigail. I don't know. It, it's kind of weird. Um, I don't know why they just couldn't have called this Abigail Live. I don't know. That's what I call it because the title is just weird. Abigail Live rolls off the tongue a lot better than this title. Um, and then, uh, anyway. Um, and then you get the back, uh, with the pictures of the band members. And, of course, the track listing. So, overall, um, a very good live album. Uh, it's definitely, like, compared to, I guess, all their studio recordings, it's definitely a, little, a lot more raw. Um, it kind of reminds me of, um, uh, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of, I guess, like, early Maiden live albums, like, you know, Made in Japan and something like that, where... Um, it's just super raw, but it sounds great that way. Um, yeah, I mean, even on the back here, it says, this live album, sorry, this album is live in, uh, sorry, messed that up. <laughs> this album is live in every true sense of the word. Um, so yeah, they didn't touch it up or anything. It's not remastered, it's not reworked, it's not overdubbed. Um, there was even a little note inside the actual sleeve that just set, basically says that this is a true live album. Not overdubbed, not redone, not remastered, nothing. It was not tampered with in any way. So you get a pretty much a true live recording here. Um, so for the most part the songs are great. Although, like I said, I'm not a fan of the songs Come to the Sabbath or No Presents for Christmas. But everything else is great. Um, and yeah, I think it's a fantastic live album. I'm going to give this mm, probably a 9 out of 10. Um, the only issue I have, like I said, is those two songs, not very good. But ev again, everything else is great. So yeah, I'd say this is a near perfect album. Uh, perf near perfect live album. And it's a 9 out of 10. Alright, so that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.